Hey, busy business people. I am here today with another entrepreneur taking action, Jason Sercone. Jason helps entrepreneurs level up as a podcast guest to grow your brand and generate sales. And I'm going to borrow his brain and get some great tips for you. So stay tuned. Okay, Jason, so like, what is the number one mistake that you see someone make as a guest on a podcast? The biggest mistake I see is guests just immediately go into sales mode and they think their number one objective is to come on any podcast that's willing to have them and just start selling their products and, and selling their services. And they're really missing huge opportunities to make a connection with the audience when they do that, because no one is showing up for a sales pitch or an infomercial guests, or I'm sorry, audience members are arriving to that podcast because they want to hear some compelling content, potentially have a uh, problem solved and get some entertainment and education at the same time. But if you're constantly selling, people are just going to tune out and more than likely not come back to that podcast, which is going to create a whole new set of problems because now the podcaster can't grow the way they'd like to. So yeah, do not sell. And that's the biggest problem I see. Uh, I think that's such a big one. I know it happens very quickly too, because most people, the first question they ask is, Hey, you know, Jason, tell us all about you and what you do. And then they dive straight in like that first little bit at the beginning when people do that, how long should that be? typically, so you don't dive into a sales pitch? Well, I will say this. I think you can save time as, as you're, if you're the producer or host of the show, you don't need to read somebody's bio. And we see this on a lot of podcasts because that's incredibly awkward for the guest who's just sitting there listening to you read. And sometimes they'll read the whole blog post about who you are and what you've done. And the audience can typically pick up on the fact that you're just reading something. My approach to that is if you are looking to get your show started off strong and have the guest showcase who they are and what they've done, let them do it. Ask them a question that gets them to talk about it. So it's more compelling. And now you're getting a conversation flowing versus having that two to three minute window. And I, I mean, I've heard longer than that where you're just reading something and then the guest is sort of sitting there twiddling their thumbs, wondering, well, when do I jump in? I, if you listen to my podcast, I jump in with a question immediately. Christina, you do the same thing. I just learned that now. And I've learned that from listening to past episodes of your show, jumping in with a question gets the conversation flowing immediately. And it gets to the meat and potatoes and the nuts and bolts of why people showed up right out in the open right from the start and the quicker you can get to the value, the more likely you are to hang on to that listener and keep them in place. So I would say at the beginning part, like to answer your question, let them tell their story, but you want to keep it limited to where it's not just the gone with the wind version. It's more of the cliff notes that lets people know who you are, what you do and how you're going to help them solve a problem today. What are they going to learn from listening to you on this specific podcast? If you can get that out in a relatively short time frame and get people indoctrinated into who you are, then you're going to be in a good place. And that's going to keep the listener engrossed in the conversation that's about to unfold. That's a really smart way to handle that. So it's like if, if the host asks you like, hey, tell us about you and what you do go, this is who I am. This is what I do. And this is the problem I'm going to help you solve today on this podcast. And then Absolutely. you're done. Yeah. Yep. I love and that. That is great advice. <laughs> <laughs> and setting the table for what you're going to learn when you listen to that podcast. Because if you think of the succession of when people find a podcast, it's typically through a social media post, or if they're doing a search on a specific topic and that podcast is presented to them, they're going to look at the title if the title resonates with what they're looking to find information about next, they may read the show description. They may bypass that altogether and just hit play. So if you can let them know in the first minute by listening to this podcast today, you're going to learn X, Y, and Z. If that's the reason I showed up, then I'm going to listen and I'm going to stay on that show until I get to a point where I feel like maybe this is not what I came for. And if it is what I came for, you've got me for the whole episode. So you have to be thinking on that level of how a person that discovers your podcast goes through that progression 
to hit that play button. And then when they hit the play button, are you delivering the value that they arrived for? And when you do, that keeps them in place for the full run of the show. And I feel like people think about value first content when they're thinking about blogs and when they're thinking about making marketing videos and when they're thinking about all these other pieces of content, social media, email, all that value first is the name of the game. But for some reason, when we're a guest on a podcast or a host of a podcast, it it stops becoming about that. And it's like, let's just have a fireside chat about how amazing we both are. And it's like, that's not helpful. (laughs) You still have to lead value first with a topic or you're not really going to, like you said, capture attention. And I think that's a challenge too, as a guest, right? Because like the host could absolutely not have any idea what they're doing and can be trying to drag you into fireside chat, but you're there as a guest because you're trying to create content that's valuable. You're trying to position yourself as an expert. So like, obviously that places a lot of, you know, a lot on the guests. So like, what are some of the biggest fears that you've seen people have when they're guesting on a podcast? And like, how do they like counteract those? I've talked to people that have said they've come on podcasts and there were, and this goes both ways, but from the guest side, we'll, we'll, we'll take that angle first. They're concerned that the conversation is just not going to flow and there's going to be no real repartee back and forth between host and guest. And that can lead to some very low quality content. And it really comes down to what both parties are doing to make that content pop and and make it valuable to the audience. So from the guest side, you can nip that in the bud by doing some research on the very front end before you even contact that podcaster to see if you would want, if they would want you to be a guest by seeing if it aligns with your mission, your message, and your overall objectives, because you can learn a lot from the episodes they've already produced. Are they put publishing content on a consistent basis? If it's, if they are looking to put out shows weekly or biweekly, are they sticking to that schedule? If not, that will tell you that perhaps what they're doing is a little sporadic and your piece of content that you do create may not see the light of day for months or at all, because maybe they're not as serious about podcasting as they say they are and they walk away from their show. So you can learn a lot by how they are consistently producing their content. Then when you actually listen to some episodes, does it align with your expertise? If you were, if you were in that guest seat right now, would you be making the same impact as the guest you're listening to? If you can answer yes to those questions, then it makes sense to actually do the correspondence and try to make a guest appearance or get a guest appearance on that show. But if you can tell that it's very one-sided, the host doesn't ask a lot of compelling questions, it's very rote, it's very one-dimensional I don't think rote is the right word here, but one dimensional <laughs> definitely is. <laughs> I, mean, I, got my, I got my terms a little lopsided there, but one dimensional absolutely is. And a lot of hosts will fall into that trap of not letting a conversation break out. They just have to get to every single question that they laid out on their format. And if they don't, then it's not successful. And it couldn't be further from the truth. As long as good conversation takes place and the host and the guest are having a great back and forth and there's obvious chemistry, both are getting an opportunity to tell some stories and and talk about why they're so passionate about the subject matter at hand. That's what the audience is going to resonate with. The audience doesn't know how many questions you have on your format. So you have to start thinking on this level of having a good conversation is going to unfold because there's chemistry and because there's compelling questions being asked. So I know that I've talked to guests that have had this fear of when I show up, am I going to get that? I've talked to podcast hosts that are worried that their guests are going to offer nothing but very short, low-winded, very non-engaging type of answers. There's a responsibility on both sides to not let that happen from the host side. You need to ask some deeper questions, ask some below the surface questions that get a story out of that guest. Cause I can guarantee you that guest has gone on multiple shows and probably been asked similar or if not the same questions every single time, give them something that they don't get asked very often because that's going to make them say, 
Christina, no one has ever asked me that before. Let me tell you about blah, 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 blah. And then they can go into a story that they've never told before. And they're excited to tell it because it's fresh. And then for you, you've now got great content and no one has ever shared. They've never shared that story. No one's ever heard it. Now you've got your at least one clip that you can share when you promote that show. I had Joe on. He's never told the story. We got breaking news on my podcast. And it's just <laughs> another way that you can get people hooked in. But to alleviate the fear, you got to do the preparation on both sides. Hosts have to create compelling questions and guests have to understand why they're there and if they fit, and if they fit, that's going to make the chemistry come together and it's going to make overall content pop and make listeners glad that they tuned in. What do you think about guests providing questions to the host? I know I've had that a couple of times myself. People have sent me the questions that they wanted to be asked and then gave me the flexibility to like add, amend, change, like so I could still mm -hmm. add those thought provoking questions but mm -hmm. they gave a base to ensure that the conversation went the way that they wanted. What are your thoughts about that? I could not recommend that process anymore. I think that if you are utilizing the podcast platform to accelerate brand growth and, and really make a name for yourself, you want to ensure that when you make a guest appearance, you get an opportunity to really showcase who you are, what you do and how you're going to help people in their time of need and with what if you offer what they need then they you want to make sure they understand that you're the resource they need to turn to and the best way to do that is to provide compelling questions to the host that they can work with because the host is going to thank you for that because that's less work for them because they know when they ask you this question you're going to hit a grand slam with it and at the end of the day that's really what it's all about because you want the audience to hear compelling content and be captivated by what you have to say. So if you're cater as you're as the host, if you're catering to that guest's expertise, it makes it much easier to create that type of compelling, engaging content that keeps the butts in the seat. So when the audience hears it, they are more tuned in to what's unfolding in that conversation. So you can work in your own questions, but anytime, you know, as the host if, or as the producer, as you're building your show format, you can use some of the questions they provide. You can use all of them. You can choose to use none of them. But I think if you're looking to really put that guest's expertise center stage with a bright spotlight on it, it makes so much sense to pull from the questions that pr they're providing to you because you know the answer you're going to get is going to allow them to rock the mic. And when you do that, that makes the content much more credible and it makes it much more engaging for the audience to consume. I think on that like same vein, and we're talking about like making that experience better from the host standpoint and the guest standpoint. What about some of the behind the scenes stuff? We've talked about some of the, like a little bit of that, like, you know, share the questions, collaborate on those ahead of time. And then in the episode, make sure that you dive straight into a question, get it started. Don't, you know, don't proselytize about how amazing you are for the whole episode. But what else can like the host and the guest do behind the scenes to prepare to be more comfortable, like in the correspondence before they even book or in the before you hit record chatter where all of the great nuggets end up happening? <laughs> yeah. And don't get recorded. Like, what are some <laughs> tips you have in that process? Communication is key, and, and that's where so much of this process suffers because what sometimes happens, what happens more times than not, is once the interview is booked, it's booked, and no one has any conversations until the day of or maybe the day before of like, hey, are we still recording tomorrow? And I can understand that we're busy and we're, we've got other interviews that we're appearing on as guests and as hosts, we're producing content all the time. So it's not like we're going to just strike up this instant conversation to where we're always going to be in communication. That said, there still are some key ways that you can make sure that each side is prepared. So as the guest, as you're reaching out to be a part of that show, I advise everyone I work with to provide them with everything they're going to need right on the first email you send or right on the first message you send. Give them your media kit so they can learn about who you are. And within that media kit, you've got 
your expert topics. You've got your suggested questions. You've got links that they can li- they can click on to listen to past appearances. They've got a connection to your bio so they can get a feel for your personality. And I mean, in addition to that, Christina, you and I met on a service called Podmatch, which I swear by. And you can put all that information there so you can learn a lot about a person before you even start to build a show format. But if you're just doing this DIY and reaching out cold, make sure that you do this. All, all of this information they're going to need, including, I mean, so the media kits, one thing, imagery is another. Make sure that they have all of these assets they're going to ask for anyway. They have it up front. That's going to make you stand out. So yeah. that's a big part of the communication process because you'll end up at a back and forth. Okay. Can you send me a headshot? Can you do this? Can you do that? And there's a lot of podcasters that have created intake forms where you supply this information. It's a fantastic process. As long as there is some sort of communication going back and forth and you're taking that step to really stand out, that's going to help you get more guest appearances, but it's also going to help the podcaster prepare properly. And then from the podcaster side, when they're communicating with the guests, giving them a good understanding of what to expect when they come on the show. You don't have to go into verbatim. You can send the questions if you'd like to. That's definitely a process that I've been a part of. Christina, you and I did that. But Mm -hmm. a lot of times guests like to come in completely cold and and not really know what they're going to get. Because again, it it helps with them thinking on their feet. It, It helps to create some more, organic type of conversation. And some people I've seen this, I do not recommend this. If someone gives you the answers, do not write out. I'm sorry. If someone gives you the questions, do not write out your answers and then read them. (laughs) Yeah. I've I've seen that too. That's why it's like I've tossed back and forth. Sometimes I'll send the questions ahead of time. Sometimes I won't. Usually it's more like if I think I'm asking a question that they may need to prepare for, like I was hitting you right out of the gate with like, what's the number one mistake you see someone make? And it's like, you might want to think about that one for half a second because I'm asking you for like the number one biggest mistake out of all of the mistakes. (laughs) So I sent the questions ahead of time. But if I'm asking stuff that it's like they have answered a thousand times over on their blog, on their what, like I don't Mm. send the questions and I do just kind of prep them that like, here's the format. Like I'm not going to ask you who you are and what you do until the end. We're going to just dive straight in. So be prepared. Cause I've had some people that even though I tell them I'm doing that, They're still like, you know, hey, Christine, it's great to be on the show. You know, I'm Jason. I help people with like being a better podcast guest. It's like, okay, but I asked you what the number one mistake was. Yeah. That's not the question I asked. And I told you I was going to move that to the end. And like they still do it anyway. And it's like so that communication, I think, is like it's so important. Coming into this whole process with the mindset of you're just going to have a conversation with a like-minded individual or individuals because some podcasts have two hosts, some have three, whatever the format is, if you just approach it like you're going to meet some friends at a bar and you're going to have a beer and, and have some conversation about X, Y, and Z, it puts you in a more relaxed mindset to where you're not coming in thinking you have to perform and you have to be on your A game, you want to obviously bring your A game to the microphone with you. But if you come at it with a conversation in mind versus I've got to make sure I cover A, B, C, D, E, F, Y, Z, Q, whatever, it takes some pressure off you and it makes it more of a relaxing environment. And again, think from the audience's standpoint here, this content, while it is designed to help serve you, because you're positioning yourself as the expert that people are going to want to learn more from. The audience is showing up for compelling, enriching, engaging content. If you're in this rigid mindset to where you have to perform and you have to get all of these speaking points out, you're not going to be as valuable and as compelling. And it can turn people off. And think about it from... Your perspective, if you're listening to a podcast, if someone's in sales mode or someone is rigid and someone is not letting their personality shine, do you really want to listen to that person? Chances are no. So if you have this effective communication on the front end to where the host is saying, listen, here's what we're going to do. You and I are going to get together. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this and we're going to talk about this, but we're going to do it in a very relaxed, laid back atmosphere. We're going to learn a lot from each other. We're going to go back and forth 
And at the end of the conversation, you're going to get an opportunity to tell all of my listeners how to connect with you for more value. You're putting that guest's mind at ease. So you're doing your job as the producer, as the host of that show. If you are on the guest side, you have all this great information. Now it's up to you to take the next step. Jump in and listen to an episode or two. Get a feel for how that conversation is going to flow. Take a look at their website to see how they're producing this content and, and publishing it. Once it goes live, how are they promoting it to their audience? You can do the same with social media. You can jump into their social media and start having conversations with people. I'm not saying go into sales mode there either, but you can start making your presence known even before the interview takes place. So when your episode does go live, some of those people that you've had meaningful connections with are already going to know who you are. So they're, they're going to be even more excited to hear your interview with the host of the show. So there's a number of ways that you can communicate with not just each other, but with the audience and the community that creates the ecosystem of that podcast. And if you do it right, you can really stand out and make a significant impact that brings a lot of returns your way. Yeah, my brain is just going into so many different little tweaks and changes I need to make. Like, I like my process for the most part, but like, I'm sitting here thinking about all the tweaks and changes. Cause, like, if we're helping someone write a blog article, we're constantly evaluating the content on does it match the promise that we made in the title? Like, are we delivering on what we promised in the title? And I feel like as you're going through the podcast, that's how you make sure, like, A, you have your title ahead of time. Like I said right off the beginning, that you help people level up as a podcast guest to grow their brand and generate sales. And I'm going to get some tips out of you on how to do that. So the entire time we're talking, my goal is to get tips out of you because that's what I promised the listener that they would get. So mm -hmm. I feel like if we're matching the title, if we're matching what we said we were going to do through the whole time, then you don't necessarily have to have questions prepared. But you have to be thinking back to, okay, have we deviated? Are we way too off in left field? Or are we still working on tips on how to be a better podcast guest? And I think it's, I think that's so important. My brain is just like chunking away. And like over time, as we're sitting here talking on all the different ways I could tweak things. And I yeah. think something else that you mentioned too, like we've talked about a lot of things that a podcast guest can do. And I feel like a lot of people want to be podcast guests because it's all of the benefit without the the hassle of being a host and having to produce the episodes and all that, but it's really not. There's still a lot of hassle, right? Because I mean, like summing up a lot of the stuff that you've just said, you know, you need to think about what your questions are. You need to go listen to some of the episodes that they've put out and like, look at what the style is before you even book, just even make sure this is somewhere that you want to be. And this is a host you want to be with. And they're putting out episodes and not going to just like sit on them for 10 months. Like we talked about before the show, or sit on them and never put them out. Cause like, that's mm -hmm. a whole crazy thing that I don't even understand. And then they have to actually prepare for the show. They have a responsibility while they're being recorded to stay on point and answer questions and not proselytize or going to sales mode. After the show, they need to be like engaging on social media. They need to be sharing out the content. They need to be, there's still a lot of work. Like, yeah, you're not actually producing the episode, but there's still a lot of work to being a podcast mm -hmm. guest. Right. So, like, how many episodes do you think someone can be on each week realistically before all of that work starts getting sacrificed? That's a great question. I To speak to that point before I talk about how many episodes you should be on, I think, it you know, from the guest perspective, yeah, you don't want to think that it's just you're showing up for the interview and that's where it ends or begins and ends. Where you are saving time is you don't have to do any of that back end production work. And Christina, as a podcaster, you know, there is a lot that we do on the back end to produce an episode because after this raw interview, you have to edit and you make sure that it sounds great. And then you add in your music and your ads or whatever else you do. And that's what you end up sharing with the world. So from the guest side of it, you don't have to do all of that work, but you're costing yourself opportunities. If you don't, take that piece of content once it's live and share it with your audience in some way, shape or form. One of the biggest gripes that I hear from podcasters is that their guests will go MIA after they have the interview. And I always say, listen, this is still a two sided affair. What are you doing to keep the conversation going? Because if you just sign off and we never talk again until the episode goes live, they might think, well, I've already done 
105 other interviews in that time frame. This is just another spoke in the wheel. What do I have that's, you know, what do I, what, what's my benefit of sharing this myself? Now, that's also a lopsided way of thinking, and I'll get to that in a second. But as the podcaster, maybe you find a piece of content in your everyday scrollings that would resonate with that with that guest because you just talked about it like, Hey, look at this. We just talked about this, just keeping the relationship going because one of the big benefits of podcasting that a lot of people overlook is that this is the best digital networking platform on the planet. Hands down. I will argue yeah. that until I fall off the chair, Christina, you and I, before we even went live, probably spent more time than we had planned just talking about all of these different things and, and maybe even finding a way to work together. That's enormous. And if you come at this with the right attitude and the right mindset, those types of opportunities present themselves to you. But if you come into it with this transactional mindset of I'm here to talk, I'm going to do this, I'm going to say this, and when it's done, I'm out, you cost yourself opportunities. So yes, there is more work than just showing up for the interview. But if you do it right, A, you're going to get into a rhythm where it becomes natural and B, you're going to start seeing results because I've talked to people that have said, I've done podcast guesting. That doesn't work. I don't know. Okay, well, what did you do with the interview when it went live? What did you do to build a relationship with that podcaster? And more times than not, no, I didn't really do anything. Well, of course, then nothing happened because you didn't do anything to set up a catalyst for this to be a positive strategy in your brand building initiatives. So to answer your question, now that I've got that rant out of the way. <laughs> It really comes down to how much you can manage. I recommend to everybody, especially in the beginning, that they start small. Try to do one per week. If you try to do one a month or one a quarter, it's really not going to be impactful to your brand building initiatives. So you want to be sure it's that you're doing something. It's hard to build a muscle, too. Exactly. You have to put in the reps. And when you, you get on these shows and start taking the practice swings, you start finding your voice and and finding new and compelling ways to tell your brand story and, and figuring out, okay, maybe I say, um, too much, or maybe I use the word like too much, or, you know, or whatever the, a lot of the filler phrases that people use in their natural way of talking that you don't think about, it translates to the microphone. And until somebody actually shines a spotlight on it, you don't think about it. And that's one of the things I do in training is through a mock interview, I will just let you flow. And then I can say, okay, here's something to work on. But that's a story for another day. When you are comfortable with this process and you have a strong way of telling your story and maybe you're seeing some results trickle in, maybe you've made a couple of great connections, it's led to new opportunities, then start upping the number that you do per week. I can say, for example, this week I have five interviews that I'm doing. Some weeks I have more than five. Some weeks I have less than five. I'm always trying to do at least two per week. That's usually my goal that I shoot for. But when I have more, I'm prepared for it because I, I've i done this enough now to know how I want to present myself and I can manage it within my schedule to where this is a big part of my day because I love doing this. I love connecting with other podcasters and having these meaningful conversations and, and helping them create great content that the audience can listen to and really get something from. So whether you want to become a podcaster, whether you want to build your brand as a podcast guest, hopefully there is something within Christine and I's conversation today that truly resonated with you to say, maybe I'll look Jason up and see what else he can offer me. And whether that's coming to my website or just listening to this podcast over and over to absorb all of these tips and strategies, that to me is I'm doing my job. I'm doing my part to make the podcasting world better and to make everyone better at utilizing this medium to take their brand to the next level. So do as many as you're comfortable with and then grow from there as things start to take off. I think that's awesome advice. It's like putting in those reps is really important and building your systems. Cause I mean, there were so many steps. Like I hope people go back and listen to this recording and like listen to all of the steps that were part of being a really good guest or even being a really good host and like all the stuff you have to do, there's a process in there. There's like stuff you need to do in a certain order and you need to do it every single time. And there's so much value to podcasts. People are like, Oh, what's the size of your audience? How many downloads do you have? How many, like, 
yeah, that matters. It's okay. It's cool. But it's, I've, I've hired people that I've interviewed as podcast guests because <laughs> it was like, dang, you're impressive. I need you. Mm -hmm. So I've hired people. I've been hired by people. I've built JV relationships with people that, you know, fill in gaps that I don't do for my clients. Like what me and you talked about before the show. Like yeah. there's so many other ways to monetize. It's like, even if the relationship isn't great, look at all the content we created. How many yeah. like little videos could you take out of this and go put them out on like TikTok or YouTube shorts or Instagram reels? Mm -hmm. How much blog content could you put together? You could put together a whole nother resource. You probably already have it, but like, you know, tips of like how to get started as a podcast guest or processes yeah. for how to be a good podcast. Like just being interviewed, if you didn't have a lot of that content already, like all the questions that I've asked, all the like conversation that's come up, that can be spun off into other content. Like there's so much value in podcasts. I love it. I get excited about it. <laughs> it's yeah. daunting on the production side, but it is like, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Okay, well, and clearly so, you look, well, you look at this the right way. A lot of podcasters come into this thinking that, oh, this is going to just lead to millions and millions of dollars because Joe Rogan did it. But yeah that's not the case. And Joe Rogan, it took him 20 some years to get to where he was, that he was in a position that they offered him that money. So yep. start looking at it from this standpoint where you get to have conversations about subjects that really get your juices flowing and really get you excited. And you get to connect with a new person each and every time you do a podcast episode. So the networking potential is through the roof. You start looking at podcasting from that standpoint, you get more from it and you don't quit after seven episodes, which is like at least, I mean, that statistic could have fluctuated somewhat, but that's the average number of episodes that people do and, and publish before they walk away. And it's because yeah. their mindset is not what it needs to be to truly embrace this medium and get the most from it. Yeah, they get hung up on the download count or on the views mm -hmm. and things like that. And they're like, oh, that's the only stat that matters. And it's like, if you look at mine, it doesn't have high downloads or high viewers, but I've you made money to. off my podcast. I've monetized exactly. it already exactly. without, I'm not selling ads. I'm not, you know, doing. I'm just publishing the content that I put. It goes in my Facebook group. It goes out to my email list. It goes yeah. on my social media, but it's the relationship with the guests. And I've automated some of the touch points. Like mm -hmm. Calendly will handle some of that for you where it lets, you know, talk, communicates with the guest ahead of time. Hey, this is going to be video and audio. This is going to be, mm -hmm. and it like talks about it. And then on the back end, it'll be like, Hey, do you know any other podcast I could be a guest on? Or do you have any other guests you would recommend for my podcast? And that's mm -hmm. all automated. And then my assistant, whenever it's done being published, she'll reach out and be like, Hey, it's published. Go share it. But I mean, yep. I still have to follow up on social media and do my part manually. Cause I built a connection, mm -hmm. but there's still so many other touch points. That yeah. are so much more valuable. And I mean, people are all the time like, I don't know what content to write about on my blog or on my social. And it's like, go be a guest on podcast because they're going to tell you, they're going to ask questions. They're going to give you what you need to go do. Like they're building your content strategy for you. Yep. Absolutely right. <laughs> like, no, I came up it. with questions to ask and there may be at least one or two I've asked you that nobody else has asked. There's your new content that you can go create yeah. on your own platforms. It's like, Bingo. there's so much value. So, so, so 100, much value. 100%. Yeah. I love this platform for that. Well, I hope we've convinced people that they need to be a podcast <laughs> guest and that there's more to it than they realize and they don't just get to show up and be pretty. So if someone is serious about it and they want to do it right, what do you have for them out in the world? Jump over to jasoncircone.com slash ETA. And when you land there, you're going to have two choices and you can take advantage of both of these. I highly recommend that you do. One is you can get access to a free masterclass that I put together called five things people fail to do before becoming a podcast guest. So just enter in your email and you'll get the access link for that sent right to your inbox. And I'll also have a link where you can take a quick two minute quiz about podcast guesting. And is it right for you? And the reason I lead with podcast guesting before I lead with starting your own podcast is because you can really get a strong feel for whether it makes sense to start your own show by being a podcast guest. So going on other podcasts and finding your voice and telling your brand story and making connections, it's going to give you some guidance on whether it makes sense to start your own show. Now, if that's, if you are dead set on starting your own show, that's okay. And we can talk about that. I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you, but I'm very real with letting you know, this is what it takes to make a podcast take off. 
So doing the guesting side allows you to jump into this world and get a feel for what it's like to be on the microphone and tell your brand story. And once you do reach that point where you can say, you know what, I'm loving this. I want to keep being a guest, but I want to start my own show. Fantastic. Because one of the greatest ways to grow your audience is by going on other podcasts as a guest. So it all comes full circle because when you go on a podcast with an established audience, not only do you connect with a host that you could say, listen, I'd like to bring you on my show too. So we'll have two different conversations, one for yours, one for mine. So you create relationships in that respect, but you also get the opportunity to connect with people on a platform where they're already converted. Podcast, if people hear you on a podcast telling you, telling them to go listen to your show, you know that they heard it on a podcast. <laughs> it's 100% in regards to getting them to make that jump. If you try to do it through social media where Having that presence is, is, it can be strong and it's good for communication and awareness and creating some conversations. But if people are in one of those infinite scroll holes, then they may not want to jump off of that to go listen to your podcast. But if you're on a podcast and you say, this has been great connecting with all of you today. I have a show called blah, 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 blah. Go jump over on, I'm on, I'm on Spotify. I'm on Apple, wherever. Follow me and listen to the show there people are already listening to a podcast. It's much easier to make that transition. So again, to, I went long winded here, but that's the reason why I go <laughs> so strong with guesting. So go to jasoncircone.com slash ETA. And that's how you get started. Now, if somebody wants to like not DIY it themselves and they just want to pay you money, because I strongly advocate that as much as possible. Like if you can find a really smart person and you can pay them money, you will save yourself so much headache, like so, so, so much headache. So if someone wants to do that. What does that look like? If they just want to give you money and say, make me a better podcast guest. That is awesome. And I will gladly <laughs> ex ex accept that offer. Jump over. When, when you land on my website on the ETA page, you're going to have access to everything. Check out my services page, check out my guest accelerator page, and you can schedule a consultation right through my website as well. And we'll have a brief conversation, ultimately getting to know what your goals and ambitions are in this space. And then from there, I can tailor a coaching program and customize it to what you need, because this isn't cookie cutter and this isn't going to be the same objective for each person that comes in. Obviously, you want to make an impact on the space, but we're going to find the best way to do that. So when you're on my website, please feel free to book a free consultation. It's worry free. It's going to cost you half an hour of your time. And it's going to allow us to really get into what you want to get from podcasting. And we will proceed from there. Yep. And it is a tailored approach. Like mm. I will say that for like why people need to just contact you. There's a ton of resources on being good podcast guests. I mean, you shared several of them with our audience, which is great. But learning how to actually apply that to like, hey, I have these very specific sales goals. How can I leverage being a podcast guest to do that? Things like how do you find the right hosts that could be potential referral partners of potential clients that you can go, you know, use the podcast as an opportunity to meet them and network with them. Like how can you, there's so much strategy to being a good podcast guest and being a good podcast host that it's like, you really need someone helping you kind of figure that out. So I want to throw that really good, strong push in there. <laughs> that yeah, the consultation I call that. is worth it. Even if you end up yes. with the freebies, like, you know, consultation call with a path to get to the paid one is a great way to go. So I have kept you busy for like 40 minutes plus our chit chat beforehand. So that's all the brain downloading I'm going to subject you to today. Thank you so much for coming on. I know this is like intense because you're having to advise people on how to be a good podcast guest while you're also being a podcast guest. It's, very so it's a little meta, intimidating. Right? <laughs> Not at all. This is, again, for me, this is the greatest way to connect with people to teach them about how powerful this platform can be. And hopefully when they hear me, it's it, it serves as an example of once you learn how you want to communicate and, and what you can tell the audience, I can learn from Jason how he does it with the podcasting space, apply it to what I do. And then I can start going on podcasts that align with my mission, my message, and my objectives. 
and I can make a similar impact. So people start to reach out to me and learn more about what I do and enter into my ecosystem so I can continue to nurture them and ultimately turn them into customers and brand advocates going forward. I feel so, like we've, been, yeah, for we've me, exemplified yeah, for me, this is, like so many things on this one. I feel <laughs> like it's like we did the questions ahead of time. We asked interesting stuff. We ran it the right way. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, we exemplified like the perfect combo because like we're both targeting a very similar audience, but we have very mm -hmm. like complementary services. So it's like yes. the, the ability to connect and have the right guest host combo yeah. worked too so it's like i hope our audience like picks apart not just what we said tip wise but what we did <laughs> yeah just the overall action of having this collaboration and that's really one of the most most important terms to keep in mind with podcasting is it's a collaboration you're collaborating with the guest you're collaborating with the host you are putting together content in a collaborative fashion that's designed to entertain to educate to inform to provide new perspectives so I feel like we've done our job today, but we'll let the audience be the judge of that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Same here. And thank you so much for coming on. I think this has been absolutely fantastic. I appreciate you having me, Christina. And one last quick message to the audience. Christina does an unbelievable job with her content here. So please, the least you can do is jump over to Apple Podcasts and leave a quick rating and written review. Because what that's going to do is let the world know what you think of the show. And it's going to help new listeners find this podcast. So take a few minutes to do that. I know Christina will appreciate it. Ah, uh, definitely. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, guys, entrepreneurs, this is your call to take action. Head over to etatoday.zone to learn more about how to build a business that enables your lifestyle instead of taking over your life. Until next time. Bye, guys.